Hello guys, I am Shane Davis, 20-year comic book veteran. I'm here with Yancey Lynn, and today is the day we are talking a little bit more about the decimated comic book industry as, get this, Dark Horse decides to uh, go exclusive with Penguin Random House. Now, we've been reporting on this basically on this here YouTube channel. Please hit like, subscribe, ring the bell for notifications. How? Basically, ever since the shutdown and Diamond shut down for like three months or something like that, and it basically shut down all comic book distribution around the globe, believe it or not, every company's been looking for an out, a new, a new way. There was Lunar. There was another distributor that then collapsed. And then everybody started making deals with Penguin Random House. Now, for me working in publishing for, uh, I, I don't know, 20 some odd years, actually Superman Earth One was a co-op between DC, Penguin and Random House, something I worked on. So I kind of understand that Penguin Random House actually are big players and sometimes would um, help Marvel and DC sell their trades or original graphic novels and getting publicity and getting into the uh, book market, which would be, you know, like real brick and mortar bookstores, not comic book shops. So it's kind of weird that Penguin Random House is actually has any interest whatsoever in single issues because that's just not what they do. But everybody's going in bed with them. Why? Because uh, they're offering, I think, pretty much free shipping if you, if you open up an account with them. Even if Diamond gives big discounts, the free shipping basically eats up the discount. So, it, you know, that's a big factor. And a lot of comic retailers, from my understanding, they're kind of going the way because they have to. If they want Marvel or DC, they have to go to Penguin Random House. It's not really an option. I've talked before about there's basically a circus tent and there's all these poles. And the big poles, Marvel and DC... They come down and you have all these other little poles that are holding up the tent. And the weight of the tent just starts leaning on these other poles. And what we're starting to see now is companies like IDW and now Dark Horse. Those poles are now leaving and, and the weight of this tent is kind of leaning on these smaller poles. Except now um, we're starting to see other small companies kind of run in and try to be a pole holding up the tent. Realistically, is that possible? That's going to be the question we're going to be watching in the next couple of days, but we kind of want to get into the news of this. It seems like Marvel was really like the first big boy to go to Penguin Random House. After that, a slew of other smaller players like IDW went in. Now, it wasn't exactly a honeymoon from the start. I know a lot of retailers complained about the quality of the books they received, a lot of shipping damages at first from Penguin, but it seems like the problem has been more or less resolved. And now the complaint is in the other direction. They're saying that the diamond shipping is horrendous, and not only that, sometimes they will have to wait to midnight to get their shipments and then they have to stay up. They have to pay their employees to stay up late to come in and do all the unpacking for Wednesday, New Books Day. Well, it seems like basically Penguin is having a real handle on stuff. So well, let's look at what they're saying. They want to expand their reach into the direct market and their mission is to support comic shops and fostering fans for all ages, a lifelong love of comics, graphic novels, and manga. So that is interesting. They are definitely looking into growing their consumer from a child to a teenager to an adult. They want them to follow that chain down, which is right. kind of different from what the superhero is, comic book industry is really looking at now. Marvel DC type comic, they're actually chasing their demographic into uh, focusing, hyper-focusing on identity politics and the sexuality of the characters rather than trying to reinvest into new readers, period. Now, What's interesting here is Diamond uh, has something to say about this. They, of course, had to issue a statement. They have to save a little bit of face as uh, everybody's evacuating their distribution. So, But there was one part that was interesting here. That's right. So, of course, the usual boilerplate here, you know, with your value partners, blah, blah, blah. And it seems like, okay, they say we are pleased to maintain our role as a distributor of dark cost merchandise worldwide. All right, so they still have a bit of dark cost business, just that most people will probably want to go with the free freak now, especially if they can get Marvel and IDW stuff at the same time. Oh. Dark cost direct market sales represents only approximately 1% of Diamond's top line sales, inclusive of comics, games, merchandise, and pop culture items. So, all right, this is a really big, what, like, what the hell moment with this thing? Because it's like... Right. 1% of the sales. So you're trying to tell me that Diamond's Buckhouse comic sales is only one, not even 1% of their entire business portfolio. So what is the rest of their business portfolio, especially if they have lost DC and Marvel and IDW? Well, so, here it is. Games, uh, merchandise, and pop culture items. So right. DC has really diversified in the past couple of years. 
And when you talk about a smaller payer like Dark Horse being only 1%, well, think about it. How much of their income is actually from comic books per se for Diamond? A lot of Dark Horse, when they lost Star Wars and, and a lot of other properties, a lot of it's in the backlist, like Sin City and Hellboy. And, you know, uh, Mike McNulla quit doing Hellboy. So this is interesting um, for a couple of reasons. Um, and I really want to emphasize this. This actually supports a narrative we've been talking about on this channel. You know, com the comic book industry has been saying that they had the best year forever, right? Like, what was it like in, like... Oh my gosh, it's like over one, it's like 1.4 something billion dollars last year. But they were like, surprise, the manga dominates 76% of those sales. Right, right. So this is the lie, the great big lie that the American comic book industry has been doing better than ever. It's actually being caught in the lie right now. Um, Dark Horse is like 1% of the business, okay? So like this, this great year everybody's been, that they've had, according to Steve Jeppe, he's kind of basically pointing out it's not from Dark Horse. It's probably not even from Marvel and DC. It's it's obviously from manga. Now, this is kind of a weird spot, though, for Diamond because it kind of looks like they're starting to invest into other things like the gaming division, other other type of collectibles rather than comics. I don't know. This None of this looks good, okay? The Penguin thing bothers me in a lot of ways because everybody's – when Diamond had shut down, once you start making a comic, it's three months till it hits the shelf. That's how the catalog works. Before you get paid from Diamond, that's another three months. So you you basically tied up cash in your comic for roughly six months before you get a check to you for what you sold in your comic. So when Diamond shut down, they held on and froze assets from all these companies. None of the companies liked it because they were owed money from Diamond. And they were like, well, we can't pay any money out because we don't know what this shutdown's like. So um, it's interesting that all the companies are doing this. I understand why they're doing this, but they're kind of running away from Diamond and what happened way back when. They're going to Penguin, who really has no interest in single issues. And it might look okay now. It might They might be like, oh, they're, they're going to help us sell single issues. But once all these companies go to Penguin, and Diamond's kind of left where they are. And that saying Diamond survives even. Penguin can just one day say, we're wanting to get out of this single issue game, guys. You know, we really need to go back to hardcovers or original graphic novels or reprint editions and stuff like that. And uh, then these all these companies who are in, in bed with them, they're like, well, we still need to do singles to generate cash it takes a lot of capital to do an original graphic novel. You have to put all that work up front and we're not going to get a turnaround in cash flow in like six months. Like if we were doing singles through diamond and the American comic book industry, no matter what publisher it is survives off a of cash flow. So I, I feel like this, if Marvel or DC had to play ball with penguin and, and keep in mind, penguin, one of the first things they did when they got the Marvel account has put out some really nice additions through Barnes and Noble hardcover of old stuff. And that's really what they're interested in is reprinting this the backlist of all these companies. And that, that including Dark Horse and whoever else, IDW, whatever, sure, they'll publish it. This is, I don't know, there's something sinister about this. And I and I don't like it. I mean, I don't see Penguin really being invested into uh single issues for the long haul. Maybe if they're speculating that there's gonna be a rise in single issues, but we're not seeing that. We're not seeing that. And not only that, if you look at Diamond now, who are their supporting partners now? Image Comics is now Diamond Comics Distributor's largest comic book publisher still. And who are the other players? Dynamite, boom. Frank Miller presents. Oh, that's a new player. Like, so new, they haven't even put anything in there. That's an industry. old new player. Hang All on, right. that's an old new player. But okay, ahead. fine. Aftershock, Titan, and Ablaze. And there's Ahoy, Oni Press, and Scout Comics. Yeah, this is interesting. Scout Comics and some of these other ones, though, still do Diamond and Lunar. So mm -hmm. when you get down to the list of Oni, Scout Comics, Ahoy, Ablaze, some of these companies, they, they don't want to go all in with Penguin. They don't trust it. And I, I kind of understand that. Or maybe they're just too little to deal with Penguin. I don't think so. Scout, some of them, I could see that. But, I mean, Penguin's probably just going to try to take over the whole market. I mean, right. that's kind of what they want, right? 
Well, it'll be nice if Steve Jeppy can continue to diversify, I guess. I heard that the card game division is doing very well right now. Apparently, there was a boom in it, which is why Diamond said, oh, don't worry, guys. We have more new Diamond account open than ever. And it's like, yeah, these are all people buying for their online shops. Yeah, Diamond accounts don't really necessarily mean, though, um, comics. People really under need to understand that it can mean miniatures. It can mean uh, card games. It can mean toys. Diamond accounts can also just be um, not even comic stores, but just people that are doing mail order like okay. subscription boxes. Um, they all have diamond accounts. That's how that operates. That does not count for a brick and mortar store anymore. That can be just some dude, you want two issues of Batman, okay, sign up and I'll mail them to you. That's a diamond account today. Or it could just be somebody selling issues on eBay. It's not a brick and mortar store. And that that's really what we're talking about here is this is the beginning. You have to understand Diamond is kind of like uh, the infrastructure for the whole brick and mortar comic book shop existence. And this is actually shifting up under everybody's feet right now. The future, obviously unstable. But what is an unstable? It's in glorious racks. We, uh, the guts are printed. The books are being bound now. Um, we're hoping to get our shipment in by the end of the month and start fulfillment in Inglorious Rex 1. But the, it doesn't stop there, guys. In Glorious Rex 2, sign up is live. And we are offering a nice miniature with the subscription box for all backers. So please do look down below. There is a link for the sign up. We are gathering signups now. And you will also, with certain tiers, secret tiers, you will have access to. And there will be a anatomic lenticular card the female character from Inglorious Rex that um, all will be attached to a tier. If you sign up, you will have access to those tiers to get this awesome trading card, exclusive collectible trading card that you can only get for signing up for Inglorious Rex 2. We will catch you guys again with another video. Please hit like, subscribe, ring the bell for notifications. Bye.